Hello, everybody. Hopefully you can hear me okay. Um, I know you can't currently see me and I apologize for that. Um, it seems like Facebook is having some issues today. So we had everything planned out to be able to share a, uh, a presentation with you and then also have you be able to see me but it looks like that unfortunately won't be an option for today. So I apologize for that. We're not quite sure what's going on. We just tried to troubleshoot, troubleshoot with no luck. Um, and it seems to be a Facebook wide issue. So we're not the only ones. I know I'm not always very tech savvy, but I, I can't take full blame for this one. So thank you for tuning in. Um, if you have any issues hearing me or seeing the presentation, please just let us know. Um, but hopefully it'll work well this way. This is Monica today, by the way. I know you've had a lot of Sabrina in your lives lately for these live streams. Um, you had Colleen on Tuesday, but today you get Monica again. And for any of our dedicated followers, you may have caught my session a couple weeks ago about photo identification. So I'm back today with another really, really fun topic. Um, this is something that we really enjoy talking about. So. I hope you all enjoy learning about it. We're gonna have some fun on this rainy day here in Massachusetts. So take a load off, get settled in. And as you're listening in, please feel free to drop in the comments where you're listening from so we can get an idea of, of who's out there. So we're talking about whale poo. <laughs> And it's not very often I get to actually start a presentation with a picture of a whale pooping. So that was a really fun first for me today to be able to do that for you. Um, so we're gonna really dive in and, and take a closer look at all of this, but I'm gonna start with covering some of the basics um, and just a little bit of background about me for anyone who's not familiar or who I haven't chatted with before. My name is Monica. I am a policy manager here at Whale and Dolphin Conservation in North America. And I've been with the organization for over a decade now. And so one of my current duties is to oversee our education program. And so that allows me to talk to a lot of different people about a lot of different things. One of them obviously being whale poo. So as we get started here, again, I am just gonna start with the basics a little bit for anyone who may not be familiar and just kind of go over a couple of the ways that humans and whales are similar because believe it or not, even though they live in the ocean and we live on land, we actually do have a lot in common with them. So one of those things you're seeing on here is the skeleton and the bone structure. So if anybody has ever visited an aquarium or a museum where you're able to see a skeleton of a whale displayed, obviously all of their bones are a lot bigger but they do have almost all the same bones in their body as we do as humans. There's one potentially obvious difference here and that is the lack of legs. Uh, whales don't have legs, they're not walking, they're swimming, so they don't need all of those leg bones. But I wanna just highlight a couple of features here to also lead into some of the other ways that we're similar. One of those is the ribs. So whales do have an entire rib cage and the function of that rib cage is the same as for us as humans. So those ribs are going to protect all of the vital organs that they have in their bodies, just like us. They do have all of those same organs that function in all of the same ways. And even their whole digestive process um, is the same as ours. So everything internal that needs to be protected in us also is internal and needs to be protected in whales. So the ribs play a major role in that. The skull as well, as some of you may know, the skull is responsible for protecting our brains. Whales do have brains. Most of them are larger than human brains. That doesn't always necessarily mean uh, higher intelligence. There's definitely some, some ongoing scientific studies there to try to figure out what, if any link there is between brain size and intelligence. But anyway, whales do still have a brain just like us, so they have an entire skull to help protect their brain, as well as their jaw bones and everything to, to um, help their mouth function. And then they also do have a spine. So one of the characteristics of all mammals is that they have a backbone. So all of those same vertebrae running down the length of their back, 
And uh, a little fun fact here, we've actually had this debate in our office before about whether or not whales have necks. <laughs> and they do have the vertebrae in their neck, but their neck is actually fused. So they can't turn their head side to side like us. But they do have all of those same bones. All right, so talking about bone structure, again, whales are mammals. They have all the same organs in their body as we do. They all work in the same way. So let's start to flush this out a little bit. Whales eat a lot of food and they actually have multiple stomachs, unlike us. They have different stomach chambers that each do a little bit more to help break down their food. And where I am based here in Massachusetts, off the coast is where one of the main feeding areas for a number of different species of whales, but especially humpback whales like you're seeing here. If anyone has ever been on a whale watch in this area, there is a decent chance that you've been able to see whales feeding. Uh, it's a really spectacular thing to see and humpbacks are, are really good at it. And whales can feed in all different parts of the water column, but we're always fortunate when we get to see it happen at the surface. And so the pictures that you're seeing here are just a few examples of humpback whales with their mouths wide open. They can take in a lot of food at one time. They then, in, in the case of these humpback whales, they have something called baleen in their mouths. Sabrina did an, an earlier session on baleen, so definitely go back and check that out if you haven't seen it yet. But they're filtering out all of the salt water so that they don't get dehydrated because just like us, they would get dehydrated if they drank too much salt water. And then all they wanna do is eat the fish and they're eating a whole lot. And the more you eat, the more it has to go somewhere. So, do whales go to the bathroom? Well, the answer is yes. As you may have guessed already, we're doing this whole topic today on talking about whale poop. So they do, in fact, relieve themselves. Now, whales swimming in an ocean obviously don't have a dedicated place to go. There's no particular part of the ocean that they have to head over to in order to be able to relieve themselves. So it can kind of happen anywhere. And we'll dive a little bit deeper into this, but we are lucky that we often get to see it at the surface. And so that's why I have this wonderful selection of pictures to share with you guys of just a few of the times that we've seen whales pooping at the surface. So this is an indication that they have been eating. So what, come, what goes in must come out. So the more that they eat, the more that they have to poop. So pooping is a good sign in terms of the whale's overall health. We know that they're in pretty good condition and we know that they've been able to find food if we can see them pooping. Now, usually when I'm giving this type of presentation in schools, this is about the point where I lose uh, the attention of all of the kids in front of me. They're giggling, they're reacting, they're talking about how gross this is and you know, it does make you kind of think maybe next time you're you're swimming in the ocean that there's whales out there pooping, but it is important to keep in mind how big the oceans are and just to know that the their their poop is not very clustered. Um, kids often ask what it looks like <laughs> and it typically is a cloud. Um, so sometimes it depends on what they're eating. It might be a little bit more clumpy, but for the most part, it's just a brown cloud like you're seeing here. And I do have a, a video of this in action. Hopefully it comes through okay on the stream. It might be a little bit jumpy. But it just kind of comes out. And when I talk to kids about this, they just can't contain themselves because it's just such a silly thing to talk about, a silly thing to see, and probably not something that they've really given any thought to previously. But that's why I'm here. And we're really going to dive in here and talk about why this is important. So we're going to continue to flush this out a little bit. And I'm going to start by talking about plants for a second, because this is really one of the most important parts here. So we talk about plants on land. We know that they need water and sunlight and nutrients. When we have plants that are on land, they can root into the soil and that's where they're going to get their nutrients. Obviously on land, they're exposed to sunlight, so that happens for them. And then on rainy days like today, they're getting plenty of water that they need. But when we look more closely at the nutrients, there are normally nutrients already in the soil, but sometimes we have to give plants food. 
And so this can come in a, a variety of forms, but an example that I have here in this plant feed is chicken manure. So this is basically poop that came from a chicken and processed into plant feed. And this is also the case for horse manure and cow manure. I think the, the manure that we use on land comes from a variety of different animals. So on land, they have it pretty easy. In the ocean, it's a little bit more difficult, but we have these little critters in the ocean that are called phytoplankton. And these are basically plant-like creatures. They're pretty much microscopic, so they're really, really small. Um, this great picture here is kind of giving you a close-up view of some phytoplankton. And they are tinted green. And these are the oceanic plants. So there's basically a whole forest out there of plants that are floating around. And so just as a quick side mention here, not to only bring up pictures of whale poop, but this happens to be a good example. If you look beyond the whale poop, you may be able to see that the water looks a little bit greenish. And that's not because the water's dirty. That is because there's a lot of phytoplankton in the water. And this picture of the whale poop was taken off the coast of Massachusetts here while we were out on a whale watch. And this is a really productive area. So there's a lot of phytoplankton here, which is consequently why we have a lot of whales here. So it's a very productive area. The more phytoplankton you have, the harder it is to see through the water. So when you think about Caribbean water, if you've ever looked at those pictures of nice, beautiful, pristine blue water, there's not really any phytoplankton down there, It's not a productive area. So um, the whales are not able to find food because phytoplankton is the base of the entire food chain. So really important to have phytoplankton out there. Now, where do the whales come in? So we're gonna walk through this one step at a time. Um, this is a really helpful infographic. We use this quite a bit and it kind of helps to build that picture. So when we talk about phytoplankton, you can see that up here floating at the surface of the water or near the surface. And again, this is important because they act like plants and so they need sunlight. And the deeper down in the ocean you go, the less sunlight you have. So you'll pretty much always find these phytoplankton near the surface of the water trying to get all of that sunlight. Now, the whales are feeding in all different parts of the water column. So sometimes they're feeding down deep, sometimes they're feeding at the surface. So they're moving all over, but any nutrients, any fish, any, any life that they are gathering at the bottom, they will bring up to the surface with them. And this is where we start talking about whale poop. So because of the force of pressure in the ocean, it's so heavy that whales literally can't poop under pressure. So they have to come up to the surface where there isn't quite as much pressure. And that is why we are able to bless you with all of these wonderful pictures and videos of whales pooping because it is something that we get to see pretty often because they're always coming up to the surface and sometimes our timing is just perfect that we get to see that in action and i'd like to give a quick shout out here because when we talk about under pressure a particular song might come to mind and we sort of have a tradition now on the boat where anytime there is a whale pooping we either will play this song or sing it if we're out of uh, cell phone range and we can't get the song to actually play and a shout out to one of our, our favorite whale watching captains Russ. i think he was the one that started this tradition for us so uh, it's a little, little bit of a, a tradition that we've learned to embrace over the years and something to also make it even more fun for us when, when we're out there watching this happen. So these whales can't poop under pressure. So regardless of where they're feeding, if they go all the way down to the bottom and they're eating down there, they have to come up to relieve themselves. And so that's really important if you're phytoplankton because you're already at the surface. So now you have a whale who's coming up to the same part of the ocean that you're in. And that whale poop that's coming back out is filled with nutrients that are so important for this phytoplankton. So uh, 